I just cannot do a subject well that I was classified as a bad person. And the schools want to keep me out. To the restroom and brush my teeth with my eyes closed. Welcome to my channel, I'm Lucia. I saw a lot of comments about the Chinese education system. Somebody say it's a prison. Somebody say it's a paradise. The Gaokao is crazy. Or it's fair, it's unfair. Today, let me share with you more of my story on the Chinese education system. I will tell you a brief introduction. How our daily life be, what I hate, and what I like. Let's continue. Kindergarten is Yuan. Yuan. That's kiss garden, kindergarten. Kindergarten is not mandatory. In the kindergarten, we play with each other, we learn simple reading and the simple mathematics. And after kindergarten, at the age 6 or 7, we will go to the primary school. Primary school in Chinese is xiaoxue. Xiaoxue literally means small school, school for a smaller kid. We have 6 grade, grade 1 to grade 6, 一年级 到 六年级. Our schedule is like 5 days a week. Usually it's from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. It's pretty long for small kids though. But at the meantime, it's a great thing for working parents. They don't need to think too much about uh, after school. In xiaoxue, in primary school, from grade 1, we learn Chinese. Yuan, math, shuxue, and from grade 3, as my experience, we learn yu, English, yu. those are the main subjects. And also we have some subjects such as art, music, physical education, art, mei shu, music, yu, physical education, ti yu. And we also have some uh, ad hoc course such as law and regulations, also some handcraft course and luckily but also unluckily those courses are not get tested or we can say it's not fully emphasized from grade five we have two other major course one is called society it's called 社会, and another one is nature nature of ziran Shui has a little bit about our country about the world and also a little bit about the history and another course is called Ziran. Ziran is nature. Nature. Talk about mountains, hills, rivers, animals, plants. That's a course I really enjoyed. I don't get tested to go into that school, but I believe some famous schools they have tests. Even for kindergartens, they hold tests. Test is a kao shi and entry test, ru xue kao shi. The great kindergarten hold entry test and great primary school hold entry test. Very luckily, my parents were pretty chill. I actually really appreciate that. I think it's too much pressure for the young student to take test. Middle school is a chu zhong. Chu zhong is like junior middle. We also have the high school is senior middle. <laughs> Junior middle school, that's Chu Zhong middle school, from grade 7 to grade 9. Usually, most people don't need to take an entry test to go into a middle school, but I do because I want to change my school district to go to an um, honestly better middle school. So I take some tests. In middle school, in Zhongxue, we studied much harder because after middle school, the high school is a selection process. And if you want to go to a good high school, you need to have a high score. The school day was Monday to Friday, and we start from around 8 a.m. to around 6 p.m. That's a normal school day. And we generally have 8 to 10 classes per day. At one class is 40 minutes. We study Shuxue, math, Chinese, Chinese literature, Yu Wen, and English, Ying Yu. Those are the three most major courses. Apart from those course, we also have biology, 生物, and geography, 地理, 地理. I like 生物 and 地理. I also like another course is uh, physics, 物理. And also we have politics, that's 政治, and history. History is 历史. Another course is chemistry. Chemistry is 化学. All these courses are mandatory. Actually, we don't have all the courses all at the same time. We have Chinese, math, English for all the three years. Uh, politics and uh, history, we have them for three years. For chemistry, we only have them for one year. And uh, biology, geography, we have for two years. And physics, we have for two years. In middle school, I start to work harder. We, we generally studied from school from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. After school, I had dinner and I will continue to study, to review, to do homework after 7 p.m. to around 9 p.m. 
generally 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. and then I go to sleep. That's my daily schedule, which is actually not considered intense, pretty normal schedule for an average middle school student who want to go to a high school and who want to beat that go -kart system. After grade 3, we had a test called uh, Zhongkao, that's high school entrance test, which is quite similar to Gaokao, but we don't have so much competition because uh, you only need to be admitted to the good school, good high school in your city. It's not all over the country. Zhongkao and Gaokao can be pretty stressful because this is the only one element for the school admission. Another stressful thing is it tests all the knowledge you learn in the three years. It could be a lot. After grade 9, we are admitted to the high school. High school called Gaozhong. I noticed some of you have 4 years in the high school in Gaozhong. We only have 3 years. We could call them high school grade 1 to high school grade 3. as Gao Yi to Gao San, Gao Yi to Gao San. Talking about high school, the crazy thing happened. That's my experience. It's also the experience for nearly all the students in my city. So. We have school every day for a week. We only have like a half day break on Sunday. So I can show you my schedule. I generally get up at 6 a.m. It's so reluctant. I generally just close my eyes and go to the restroom. Yeah, and brush my teeth with my eyes closed. That's pretty normal situation for me. So I get up at 6 a.m., have a quick breakfast. I call the school bus at 6.30 a.m. I reach school at 7 a.m. And then we have the first morning study session. Morning study session, 早自习, until like 8 to 8.30, we have our first lesson. So we generally have five classes in the morning, and then we have an hour lunch break. And then we have three other courses in the afternoon, two other self-study sessions. And then we have our dinner break. Dinner break is around 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. It's about an hour. And after the dinner break, we still have like two other night self-study sessions. And then we are released from the school. <laughs> I generally got back home around like 9.30. And I will have some snacks, I will just chill a little bit, and then I go back to study for one more hour. I generally went to sleep at 11.30 or 12 a.m. And actually, a lot of my classmates have a more intense schedule than me. At least I got a home, I don't study so much. So in high school, uh, we had some mandatory classes such as math, Chinese, English, 数学, 语文, 英语. And also, we can choose a part if you want to learn. I think those are more like a literature part, like physics, politics, uh, history, and geography. Those are 政治, 历史, 地理. And you can also choose a part more related to science, which are physics, chemistry, biology. Those are 物理, 化学, and 生物. So for me, I choose the science part. And after you choose the bracket of the course, it separate the students into two parts, and they went into different classes. That's 文科生 and 理科生. College entrance is pretty intense. Like we said, it's one test for all. For the last year of my high school, that's Gaosan, I generally just sleep like six hours a day to study for this Gaokao exam. And I also really appreciate my parents, my mom and dad, they support me so much. As I said, I get up at 6 a.m. They just think I do uh, such a hard work, so they want to cook a very nutritious breakfast for me every morning. Yeah, at 5.30, I really appreciate that. And I also studied after school. Uh, my mom don't want to sleep earlier than me. That was so sweet and so considerate. And I think most uh, Chinese parents did that. They do such a great job for their kids that are not normal hours. And all the people says Gaokao, the college entrance, is the most important thing in your life. So you have both big physical and mental stress at that time. And luckily or unluckily, later we find out no, it's not the only thing in your life. For every school all over China, regardless which school, which major, or which location, they only see you, they only rank you uh, by your college entrance score. And they choose the, yeah, the top scores to admit to their university and major. So since I rambled <laughs> so much for my school life, uh, let's talk about uh, what I hate. 
first and then what I like. I think the first thing is I'm generally kind of liking that critical thinking ability. We studied so hard for high school. We said the Gaokao is the most important thing. The score is the most important thing in your life. But I never think about or uh, the school never told us about how to use that score wisely. We were only given like two weeks to choose our major, to choose our location, to choose our school. For me, as my example, I choose one of the hardest major at that time, but uh, which is not something I like. It is pretty normal for me at that time. I don't think it's important to choose something you're interested in. Is it crazy? And I chose one of the hardest major, which needs a high score. After going to college, I just find um, it's not something I can perform so well. The second thing, I think people emphasize the point so much. Point is too important in our life. Study is everything for 12 years in our life. What if you have other potentials instead of study? There is a phenomenon that we are classified as good students and bad students uh, directly from score. That's called 好学生 and 坏学生. Sometimes this bad student can also indicate something which is not true. When people get bad grades, they are 坏学生. My parents, my teacher, may told us like, don't play with them, they are the bad student, they are the 坏学生. But actually 坏学生 only related to score, which is nothing about their personality or about this person morally. I think it's really hurtful. I just cannot do a subject well that I was classified as a bad person. We had something like a score log. We had each student's score, their subject score, and their ranking. We generally distribute this score log openly to each person in your class so you can see everyone's score, everyone's ranking. Actually, when I'm in China, I have no opinion about this because this is something we see from kindergarten to high school. But uh, when I come to the United States, I would uh, somewhat appreciate if they can keep it more confidentially. Especially in high school, we only sleep for six or seven hours a day. We don't really have lecture time. We study seven days a week. And it's not really healthy mentally because uh, score is the only thing in your life. Mom just get furious about me when I search on social media for half an hour. Let's talk about what I like. <laughs> the first thing, I think it's a good thing to, to skip all the high school drama because we just study. <laughs> There's nothing about drama, nothing about bullying. But I, I know still some people get bullied. Everybody use all their energy to study. <laughs> Yeah, this is a good thing, but also very sad. And another thing I really appreciate is our school is so cheap, it's so affordable, it's for everyone. Uh, like for me, we generally don't pay anything from primary school to high school. All the college in China for Chinese citizens, we just pay less than $1,000 per year for the education and less than $500 a year for one year of dormitory. School is almost for everybody. Nearly all the family can afford it. Even if you cannot afford it, government will help you. It's a good thing that nobody has student loans. And another thing I really want to mention, although I hate this one score system, but at the same time, it also provides some opportunities for everyone. This is fair and unfair. If you can tackle this test, you still have a good opportunity to go to a good college, to get some great employment, to see a better things in life. I was always thinking about if this is not a one score system, we also admit others by internship, by talents, by volunteer opportunities. Those other things can be gained by networking, by paying money, by bribing. There's also closed doors for the student from a fair family or an privileged family. I had to say that. I don't really like this one score system, but I don't know my opinion. It's not uh, completely positive or negative, honestly. Especially in such a fierce competition in China, it still open doors for many different people. It also gives some chance for people flowing inside this society. That uh, in China we say it's like a 阶层流动, and we can see a bigger diversity of people. Comment down below if you have any questions or anything in your mind you want to share, or any topics you want to hear from me. Thank you for listening, and I will see you again soon.